Hi, everyone. It's Candace Craw Goldman, and welcome to another episode of Quantum Realms 2022. And today I'm going to have my very first time conversation with quantum healer Aura Moldovan. Hi, Aura. Hey, Candace. Thank you so much for having me here. It's such a pleasure and such an honor. Thank you. I am so excited, really, to talk to you because we haven't done this before and we've been trying to do this. Yeah. Um, and and here we finally are. And Aura is um, a beautiful quantum healer who has many skills, but of course, she's a BQH practitioner. And we're going to talk about some of her sessions. You know, Aura, I know that you just recently posted and it was a short video. And I'm like, I'm going to watch that before our interview. I'm going to watch that before. Did it happen? No, it didn't happen. So, um, you know, because I wanted to prepare and hear some more of your stories, I've seen some of them here and there and, and, and some, of course, on our support forum for quantum healers. But, you know, I'm going to share some of what your experiences have been and what some of your clients' experiences have been and some really great BQH and other quantum healing sessions. Can you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself, where you live, how you got into all this, how you found this work, and uh, how long you've been doing it. Just a little bit of that before you go into uh, some of your super great stories. Absolutely. And actually, the way everything started is a super great story in itself, because, <laughs> um, because well, I'm based in Sweden here. I've lived here for 20 years, but I'm, I was born in Romania. And uh, the whole thing started with, well, the typical thing being in a Romanian family, wanting your parents wanting you to be a doctor or an architect or a lawyer or something great like that. And it just never worked for me. I always wanted to express myself. I've always been the weird kid in the family and kind of always had this thing where I would sense energy ever since childhood. Um, I was always telling my mom, there's a spirit in the house, there's a spirit in the house. Or even in this room, which is kind of cool that I'm back here. I'm in my parents' house right now. So, so you're in Romania right now? I'm in Sweden, but in the house that I grew up, grew up in. I see. I see. But you were, okay, so hold on. Um, were you born in Romania or you're just, okay, so you were born in Romania, but when did you get to Sweden then? When I was 13 years old. Okay. All right. And so now you're, you're visiting home right now. Yes. I'm at my parents' house and this is where everything kind of started to go downhill for me because it was also a war situation. It was, I, I started becoming very empathic here in this room and it was right here where I used to spin and dance. And I was, I wanted to gather the pain of the entire world within me of all the starving children, all the everybody that was suffering I wanted to gather it within me and just explode with it or die with it and it got so bad that I ended up at a psychiatrist who you know prescribed medication within the 15 first 15 minutes and I got this and that and that diagnosis and that happened for about 10 years so for 10 years I was seeing spirits and I used to tell the doctors about that. Now I know better. <laughs> and <laughs> I then later realized that, hey, I'm actually psychic. And I got myself off the medication. I got myself on an amazing diet. One day I just woke up and I said I had enough. And I um, studied first fashion. But then... Um, I was watching your videos with Allison and I was, as I was sewing and making clothes and so on, I was listening to the interviews of Dolores Cannon. So it was a great time for me to listen to all this information while making clothes. It was, to me, that was the best part of being a fashion designer. So, uh, yeah. Let me just interject here because it, it, this is a theme that has come up over and over again. There's a lot of creative people who, mm -hmm. who end up doing this work. Musicians, artists, fashion designers, poets, singers, uh, you know, all of them. And they're, because this work is so creative, and I've never really heard that before. And um, 
Wow. And also this, I just have to say this, because sorry, I'm also an empath. When you were talking about gathering in that in your room, I mean, just the the waves of energy washing over me from where you're sitting um, is very powerful. So please continue. Yeah, thank you. Actually, I just cleansed the room today right before the interview because I was starting to have the same feelings about the world today. And I thought, oh, no, not again. I feel like I just regressed 20 years because it's been 20 years since then. And I was like, no, let's, let's not do this again. It's it's not really helping anybody. And it's not helping me if I if I put this all on myself. So, um, yeah. And from there, one day, you know, it was so funny because I used to be here. I was starting my own company as a fashion designer. I was making patterns downstairs on the floor and I was sitting with my cat listening to Alice and Co's session. And I was crying with my cat in my embrace. And I was telling him, it's going to be okay. It's going to be a new earth is here. And I couldn't believe it because everything that I was hearing in these sessions were things that I was thinking as a five-year-old. I was thinking, why do we have money? Why do we have to hate each other? Why can we not just live peacefully and share things among us with each other? Why? Why? What's like, it's so easy. It's so simple to do this. And that gave me a lot of hope. And so I'm going to just go back a little bit because... In 2017, I came back to Sweden. I got a job as a fashion designer. So I was in Spain for three years to study fashion. Then I came back to Sweden. And I wasn't very happy about it because I I wasn't in a good place at all. I was mentally down. I was going through a breakup. It was really bad. And I thought, I'm not going to go to a psych psychiatrist, I'm going to look for a quantum healing practitioner. So I looked for a QHHT practitioner in Stockholm. And I had what I then called a failed session. So I had a list of 27 questions. Yeah. So wait a second. This is too interesting to get go past too quickly. (laughs) So you, because of your preconceived notions about what it was, you, when it was done, you were like, that didn't work. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? But now that you've been doing this work, now you're like, okay, wait a second. Maybe yeah. that wasn't a failed session. Okay. I already love this interview so much because of course, this is what I try to talk about a lot. <laughs> I really focus on this a lot because of these, these ideas. So yeah. What and do you this want to session talk about that session. It changed my life 360 degrees. Everything. My parents are different. I jump timelines in a way that I never thought before. My parents are not the same that I grew up with. This planet is not the same that I grew up on. Before this session, there was only one moon landing where I the way I knew the universe to be I I knew it. I, I know it, right? There was only one moon landing. That's why only everybody in my class one. wanted only one. Everybody yeah. wanted to be an astronaut. If you yep. would ask any four-year-old, what do you want to become when you're going to be big? Everybody would be like, astronaut, yeah. because there was only one moon landing. Yep. Now, I met my husband three weeks after this session. I met my husband, who has, who is my, what they call twin flame, I call him my better half because he allowed me to be myself. He said, but you are quantum. You are a quantum healing healer. We are indigo children. Why are you not studying this? What are you doing with your life? So he basically gave me the free pass. He allowed me to be myself for the first time in my life at the age of 30. I could be myself and I could have conversations with my parents that I could never have before. I could, everybody changed, every, everybody, except two people, two of my friends who still remember my past the way it used to be. That's why I'm being told there's no use to talk about your past because it's completely irrelevant in this moment. It makes no sense because nobody knows that past anymore. So after that session, everything changed. Two years later, I wrote to that practitioner to thank her. Two years it took me to... (laughs) for that switch 
<laughs> Very good. Okay. You know, as you're saying this, I was thinking about my own husband. My, my own husband thinks there was like three moon landings or something. How many, how many does your husband think there was three or Thanks. five? Yes. That, I, and I, that's the kind of guy I'm married to too. And I'm like, no, there was one, just yeah. one. And, it, and there was all these reasons why there was just one giant stories wrapped around the, the just one. It's really interesting. I'm feeling a real um, visceral exchange of information um, with you about these timeline things. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. So you started uh, two years later, things started shifting because what happened then two years later? What were you starting to do? Well, I started, I went first into, I, I thought that PQH was too much for me. I, I thought it was something that I could never be. <laughs> and so I studied uh, just quantum energy and quantum alchemy. And then I realized that as I was studying it, I've always done it. I've always done protection bubbles. It's something that I was doing with my friends when we were 14, 13, we always were in the bubble. Nothing could touch us, nothing. It was our protection bubble. Or when I would, as a five-year-old or as a young kid, as I was holding the hand of an adult or someone that had a headache, for instance, I would visualize energy going from me into their body and healing them. So it was just things so that I've always been doing. Power. You recognize that power within yourself, even as a kid. Yeah, that's, uh, that's great. All right. But I've always pushed it away. So again, that's the thing, right? Being in your power. So this is what I'm doing now. The funniest thing was the session with Allison. Right before I studied DQH then, and right before I started, right before I finished the course, I had the session with Allison. And in my email with Allison, I wrote to her, I cannot be hypnotized. <laughs> it was, it's so funny. And now I hear it from my own clients. And I think it's the funniest thing in the world to say. And um, yeah, so I thought that, you know, I was giving my power away to something that was actually an illusion, something that I was told by my parents, by my teachers, by all these experts that I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know who I am. Only the experts know who I am. All the doctors know better about my body than I would ever know my body. You know, it's this, what? <laughs> you don't live in my body. <laughs> I know what's wrong with my body. So, yeah, when I had the session with Allison, first of all, I practiced like a maniac. I practiced for, I had time, three months to practice. <laughs> and I would have a recorder with me, meditate every day and record all the things that were coming to my, to me, all the, whatever I was seeing, whatever I was perceiving, I would say it let out loud. Ask, let me ask a clarifying question. You were practicing visualizing and have it and 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 meditating and imagining before your session that's what you're what you mean by practice yes exactly okay. yes and it was also because it, the first time when I had the QHHT session in Stockholm it was so weird for me to speak out loud and tell someone else what I perceive it I, I had the impression that it broke the concentration that it broke the this trans state uh, but again that was a belief right because whatever you believe becomes your reality if you believe that you cannot be hypnotized then you can't and then again what does it mean to be hypnotized as you always teach us it's just a focused mind and a relaxed body so you cannot relax your body and you cannot focus on something like you know it's very simple <laughs> actually um, and that session blew me away. It was mind blowing beyond everything because I got to experience everything that I've learned in my meditations and all the stuff that I thought was crazy because I was experiencing other beings that I've never heard about that were not Arcturian or Syrian or anything like that. But it was a completely different species that I've never heard about from a place that I've never heard about. And I thought I was crazy, but then in the session, it came through so powerfully. And I had these insane surges of energy going through my body. I mean, after the two hours when the session was over, I woke up in a puddle of sweat. It was insane. And 
I kept telling Ellison, you know, like my body is shaking. My, I feel like my arms are going to fall off. It was so beautiful and so crazy at the same time. But the feeling that I got from that session was like something that I could never express in human words, the love, the freedom, the, the power, but a power that is, um, what's the word? That you don't feel like you want to take over anything, but the, the power of being yourself and of being free. And it, it's just, it was insane. And then I thought, I want everyone to experience this. Everyone has to know who they are, where they come from, their, their origins. And that's how I kind of came up with the way that I practice now, which it's big UH, but I call it origins integration sessions because I always add the question, would you want to know your origin? Would you want to explore your origins? Even if the client doesn't have it there, I, I would like for them to go there to experience the origins of their soul. And I've also realized that more than half of my clients go directly there anyway. So we're always directly with the higher self. You know what you're doing right now? I don't know if this, you are, I'm like, I'm getting these flashes and pictures and waves of some of the imagery, perhaps, I mean, I'm just guessing, but of your clients and what they tell you that that's like for them. And uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, you, you, you're a, you're a powerful conduit to be able to be pushing all of this, the kind of things that is going on right now between you and me, just for the listeners, uh, this kind of stuff goes on between clients and practitioners all the time, not every time and different, not for me anyway, and differently depending on who's in front of you and how aligned you are and what the frequency is and, and all of that. And, and it doesn't mean that when this happens, it's bigger, better, or more wonderful. It's just, uh, it, it's just noticeable, let's, let's say. And the more that you do this work, the more that you, that you capture that. And the more that it happens in, in, let's call it real life or whatever, but in these deeply felt conversations, I think that's what I love about talking with practitioners so much is, is, you know, we don't even need the formality of a lay down, close your eyes and do that sort of thing. This is becoming a more natural and a more real thing that happens. And it's fun to do that with you today, Aura. Likewise. And it's so funny because it, it's kind of like, I already know what you're going to say. And I love that. <laughs> of course. And I couldn't agree with you more. And it's not just with practitioners. And I was just thinking these days that I love having conversations with the higher selves. And when we have these conversations, my higher self is speaking to your higher self right now and to all the everybody who's listening. And I think this is the beauty of this work. And this is what I love to, to see and to do. And, you know, the session that you mentioned that I just posted, that is a short one. It's a client who is a family member. This family member has never meditated a second in her life. Uh, she's a doctor. And she only, before the session, believed in the fact that only pills and surgery can heal a person. And it was so... You know, she called me one day, she said, I want the session right now. And I know with her schedule that she would never have time to prepare for a session or any other time that she would know of to have a session. So I said, first of all, I said, okay, especially someone like you would need two weeks to practice and at least try and meditate or read what we're doing here. But um, no. So we just did the session. And it was magnificent. She does not believe in religion. She's the kind of person who says, if, if a patient tells her, God saved me, she would say, I saved you, not God. <laughs> so she would go to this. We're the doctors. <laughs> so completely religion and her parallel. They would never intersect. And in the session, she first of all opened her eyes every five to 10 minutes. And her 
conscious mind was there all the time, present. She would always make comments. And this is what I love about it so much because we have this notion. So many people think, just like you also say, that they were just going to fall asleep and wake up with their problem solved and um, they're not going to remember anything. But that's not the case anymore. And I like to say that nowadays or in the past 10 years or so, 20 years, quantum physics has sprouted. Um, we have superhero movies. We have so many things that we are used to nowadays that our conscious mind doesn't need to be protected by the subconscious mind anymore. It doesn't have to be put aside and it's allowed to participate. And I think this is the beauty of it. And as time passes, I do think that we are merging and we start to it's not just about us becoming one, but it's about becoming one with it ourselves. And I think this is the biggest thing here, remembering yourself, remembering that we are sovereign, infinite, powerful beings and bringing that here. And we are all unique. We're not supposed to be like anybody else, not like our brother, sister, experts, like nobody else. We are just us. And I think that when we start living like that, we are going to be nothing other than love. Because when you are happy with yourself, there's nothing to spew out into the world. Yep. And that's like the definition of integrity, in my opinion. If you can <laughs> completely be yourself, uh, you know, because I still see some leftovers of people out there who, oh, they're in this situation or with this person. So they're going to present that version of themselves and those stories or whatever. And then over here, they're, you know, a different person or a different, or they're with different people or a different situation. So they present that version of themselves over there. And I, you know, I started noticing this a long time ago and and while I understood it, I completely understood it because this is the way people cope and adapt, especially in the power struggles that be. But when you can really remember and be yourself in all these places, wow, that's a real, um, that's a real shift in a lot of people's lives. And I think, you know, that's a... <laughs> That's a way to make big changes in your life. If you can think about, am I the same person at work, at the grocery store, with my parents, with my partner, uh, you know, on social media, or do I, do I put a different mask on? Ooh, what a, what a thing to say. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to say that. Uh, a different cut, you know, a. Uh, a different face on, shall we say, or a different yeah. persona. Yeah. So you're helping people, people do that. Wait. So go back to the, the session with uh, the family member. So what happened in the session that you can talk about? I, I understand, you know, you need to keep some things uh, 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 private for her, but what can you tell us about it? It was magnificent. She actually didn't have any questions and she just jumped right into it. And I, I asked her, would you like to know about your origins? And would you like to? And it was so extraordinary because it, it's just, it's super funny. She first landed into a past life, but she was there when I asked her, where are you? And then she broke me off and she said, can I please tell you what happened during the induction? Because during the induction, she had been flying and, and experiencing different realms, different planets, different things. It was extraordinary but when I asked her where are you she was suddenly in another aspect of her self her life which seemed to be human but she wasn't or at least on this planet but she wasn't sure that it was on this planet and she wasn't happy with it she said you know what I don't want to explore this life I want to go back to flying and she kept telling me this I want to go back flying into space and me being the new practitioner that I was back then, uh, because this has been my 15th or 14th client. So it was right in the beginning when I started. And um, I thought, oh, my God, she's not deep enough. And we, I went with a deep nurse to try and bring her deeper. And then we got to the two doors. Yeah. And she, I asked her, she saw a cave. And then 
she, I told, she said the cave calls to her. And I asked her, okay, then please go through the cave. And she opened her eyes and she said, but I cannot go through the cave. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. And I said, please just close your eyes and let's go through the cave. I'm holding your hand. We're going through the cave. And it was so beautiful. She got to a place which looked like to be an ancient cave with drawings on the walls. And there was a steep, um, what is it called? Uh, an, an abyss that she could have fallen into. And she said that she's scared, but then she eventually fell and she could fly. And she flew out into space and it was just beautiful and amazing. And I was asking questions like, where are you? She said, ninth dimension. She didn't know there, there were th more than three. So her conscious mind didn't know. And then she saw an angel and she opened her eyes. She started swearing in just so many ways. I, I try to censor the sen session as I put it online and she was like why am I seeing an angel take him away I don't want to see an angel and I said please just close your eyes and let's see what he why he's there what he has to tell you and um eventually she described me the angel but she didn't want to talk to him and she eventually just said like ah he's just here I'm going you know it was so beautiful and it was she exercising her power again she wouldn't do what i was asking her to do as the practitioner but she was telling me what she wants to do i'm gonna go i'm not gonna talk to this one here he's just here i'm going and she i was laughing throughout the entire session i was laughing Can i ask a couple questions now for go ahead you might be wondering so uh it seems to me like um yeah this whole i'm not deep enough thing i mean you know if I if I got a nickel for every time I've heard that from clients or practitioners in these last 14 years, <laughs> you know, I'd have a great big pile of nickels over here uh, because still these misperceptions, these misperceptions. But I'm I'm guessing that she was pretty animated in her session too is this true i mean maybe you're just getting the pictures again but she's is she gesturing with her hands or is she is she moving because some people do lay stock still and neither is better or worse than the other neither is right or wrong than the other but often when they're animated and kind of jumping around like that uh, the client's conscious mind and the practitioner's conscious mind can do this thing of they're not deep enough. So what did that look like? Was she kind of like that? She was stock still the way you said it. Was she, she? wasn't moving. She had yeah. the laptop on her. So oh, she wasn't oh moving at all or. And yet yeah. she was still very, very controlling about what was going on and interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. <laughs> And she was, but she was so aware because I would ask questions like, and she was saying, I could fly everywhere. I've been everywhere already. And I said, okay, but if you've been everywhere, can you tell me about the universe? Is it, does it have edges? Or I was just asking human questions and also just to test her to sure. see. And she said, no, it's infinite. And then she would open her eyes and she would say, what, what, the, you know, and screaming and how can it be infinite what is this so, so when when she would open her eyes she still laid still yeah i mean she wasn't moving about the computer was not falling off of her stomach i guess where she was having it so that's yeah. really interesting that's really interesting okay she, she did mention that she lost feeling of her body in the beginning when we were doing the induction so she said that she was flying everywhere and she wasn't feeling her body anymore but there was a moment where her eyes started going rem there was the rem moment and her eyes were flickering a lot and she said that my eyes are weird and she opened them again and i asked her do you feel energy going through your body and she said no it's okay but I just told her, okay, it's fine. We're, I'm going to help you here, you know, keep this space for you. And um, it was just, it was beautiful. It was magnificent. She has spoken to guides that she didn't know she had. Um, it was just beautiful. But the session ended again with her being shocked. I asked her about one of the guides who she said was a sun, um, a light. And I kept asking, but who is it? Who is it? And she was like, no, no, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. So to this day, I never found out 
<laughs> who it was, but I think she had enough. And the session was an hour and a half long with no questions, with no, her higher self had so much to tell her. It was beautiful. And the first thing she did when the session was done, she got up and ran away. And I thought, okay, she really needs to go to the bathroom. But uh, she went and got herself a bottle of wine and she started Googling everything. She was searching for ninth dimension. She was searching for Arcturians. She was searching for all these kinds of things. And she could not believe just the amount of information that came her way, which seemed, I mean, every, she received more confirmation from the internet than she ever thought possible. Things she would have never thought of in, you know, in her conscious everyday mind. And this is what I always tell everyone that, you know, I tell them, just make things up. I don't care. Make things up because please, I beg you if it's, if it's black, if it's nothing, if you don't see anything, just what do you want to see? Yes. Whatever you want to see. You're powerful. You're creative. Just make it up. You know, Dolores didn't herself didn't start there, but when she would have this kind of exchange, you know, um, when when the client would say, I'm just making it up to please you, Dolores would always say, well, you're making it up from somewhere. I mean, that's the way she said it. We as BQH practitioners, uh, we go into that a little further. You know, I, I, I say this in the course, I say this to students, but I say it publicly too. Dolores was a little bit more of, and she actually would say this too, a magician never shows the public uh, their tricks she would say. And I, I, that's fine. That's the way Dolores, I love you, Dolores. That's the way Dolores did it. And I always thought I hated magicians. I really did as a kid. I didn't like them. Mm. And, um, I, why did I need to be tricked? And how about just tell me what's going on? Because I had the kind of energy stream in my mind that I was, I, I didn't want to be fooled. I didn't want, I, wa- I wanted to know, I wanted to know more, not less. Right. And so, so I'll approach it another way. And, and people say, well, I want it to be authentic. So I don't want to make it up. And I always say, make it up, make it up. You're making up your life. Yes. You're making up this session and God made you up. It's all made up. Everything is made up. This creation is made up. Are you kidding? It's this thing that we have done to ourselves all of those years, you know, to make the populace less uh, powerful, Uh, you Mm -hmm. know, keep them away from the big T truths is, you know, don't imagine things, don't daydream, stay in your little cubicle in your little box. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's worthless. Um, uh, activity that that doesn't help. Yeah, it doesn't help you be a robot. It doesn't help you be uh, a cubicle worker. And I'm not dissing people who go pay their bills by sitting in a cubicle. That's not what I mean. What I mean is every human needs to reach into their power into their own truth for their own potential and these sort of platitudes are the things that keep us minimized and we and like with blinders on you know those are the blinders we start giving the blinders to the little kids and um sometimes it takes decades to pull those away so people can see what's possible Mm. in their lives absolutely and we are so limited when we live in the mind whereas living in imagination, living in the heart, it's nothing but expansion. And I mean, without imagination, we wouldn't have this pen. Someone had to come up with it or airplanes or all these. I always give the example of Da Vinci, or I even had teachers in fashion school. I had the teacher in the first day tell us, you have to go home, homework, go home, buy yourself some fashion magazines, cut out the pages of the designs that you liked, put them on the page, on the, on the walls and get inspired. And I said, I'm sorry, but I only get blocked if I look at other people's creations. I get inspired by just looking within myself. And she said, that's impossible. You have to look at other people's designs in order to be able to design. And I said, how did Da Vinci do it? How did Tesla do it? Like, what? <laughs> How? Wow. Yeah. There's oh nature. There's, and this is the indoctrination that you have in the system. 
or with both my thesis, this is both Sweden and Spain, they, I have failed my first thesis because they asked me, where did you get the information from? And I said, well, I, from my head. And they said, no, you have to have it referenced from other books. You have to, <laughs> you cannot just make things up. And I said, but what? And this, it was all, you know, everything very beautifully explained with conclusions and with everything, but they said, it's not, um, they, they cannot grade it because I don't have references and I just made a, you know what you're reminding me of, you're reminding me of, um, well, my own, my own upper level learning about some things, but also my, my beautiful daughter who went and got a, a metaphysical uh, focus in philosophy. Oh. She, she, she got a, she got a degree in philosophy with a metaphysical focus. Why? Because she actually sat in Dolores Cannon's class. she learned this stuff and she, and she was interested in it and, and she turned her college studying there. And when she finally did the prep work, what she realized was it was the same thing, even in, in upper level college learning, the yeah. guys, the guys would stand up in class and go, now you might think, you know, what this metaphysical focus is. Uh, but if you talk to me about energy or crystals or any of that stuff, I'm throwing you out of the class. And what we focus on here is what's real. And to him, what was real was this dead philosopher and this dead philosopher. And we're going to debate their two ideas. These guys are dead and they're not <laughs> the whole thing was and Lauren's like are you she she just sort of then ended up going through all that and you know what she did I think I've said this before in a show but and I don't think Lauren would even be listening to this show but uh, I have said this more than once and when she finally graduated because she did graduate and there was some she had some she had a couple three beautiful teachers in some other ways but some of it was just I I my jaw was on the floor with some of this, but you know, what she gave me Ara some of the, she gave me one of the best gifts ever, not even just from a daughter to a mother, but from one person to another. I'll never forget. It. I was we were in, in the master bedroom. I, we were both sitting on the edge of my, our, uh, my husband's uh, and my bed. And we had, cause we had books everywhere, you know, books, books in the bedroom, books in the living room, books in the, I mean, just, just bookshelves everywhere. And, um, and we were, there's a wall of books in front of us. And, and she's like, well, it's over. And she goes, but you know what, mom, I learned way more about metaphysics from you than I did from this degree. And, you know, she didn't have to talk about it anymore. And I just went, wow. And part of that was because, I was doing what you were doing. I was following my heart and following my passion and following the energy and then sharing it with people like that. And she was going to this formal place and getting the experts, you know, uh, the, 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 the programmed experts version of what this all was, because that was the way. And, you know, still, if you look right now, that's the way it's set up. Most higher level uh, institutions are set up exactly that way, even now. Yeah, which is why it's very hard to get out of it. And yeah. people always want proof. People always want statistics. People always want the, the, but the thing is, the proof is right in front of them. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. right there. It's, I've had. The beautiful thing with last year, 2021, and I think it has to do with the fact that we were actually divide, separated. No, we were sent back to our homes and we had to be secluded with ourselves. And what do you do? You, you just are with yourself, of course, if you don't sit all day long in front of the TV. But um, I know so many people who suddenly turned um, spiritual out of yeah. nowhere. And they had things, they started manifesting things and they're asking me, how is this happening? I had this friend who turned the job down. She was so sick of it. Um, someone kept trying to give her a certain kind of job and she's a skeptical. She doesn't really believe in anything also. She's this kind of person. And she just told this woman one day, she said, you know what? I actually got a job. I got a job in November working as this and that and that. And when she told me about it, I told her, you know what? You will get it and you will have it. In November, it's going to be yours working as that. 
And she was like, ah, I just told this woman something that, you know, I just made it up. What do you think happened? Yes, you made it what up. What do you think happened? She got that job working exactly as what she wanted to work as. It was, you know, it's, yes, exactly. It. We make everything up. I love um, it. You know what I love about that whole little story right there is, um, and, you know, we're pre-recording this uh, to run in mid-April, uh, a little bit before that time frame. But uh, as we watch the last couple years, you know, most of us, most of us are in agreement that this was a operation to control humans, right? We're, we're going to control humans. And um, it, it eventually, like what you've just said, it failed. You know, we're going to separate them from everyone. And then, then you know, most of them are going to fall or whatever. And then what actually happens is... That, that, that they get pushed so hard. And what I have found, I, I like to think of it this way. It's sort of like a boomerang thing. What I have found is these, these uh, powers, uh, you know, you call them whatever you want and wherever they uh, originate from, but they use boomerangs a lot, right? And they throw these boomerangs at us a lot. And yeah, they, they knock some of us in the head, but very often this boomerang just comes back around and it knocks them out. And, you know, that's the wonderful thing about the human spirit. If we can keep focusing on the positive with our brothers and sisters and keep reminding them of their incredible power, you know, and that not to give that away and to stand in their integrity and truth. Um, together, we'll all kind of help that whole thing dissolve. And, and it's just, the thing is, is it's just not going to happen overnight, is it, Aura? It's just going to take a little while. This is playing itself out and we got to pace ourselves. Yeah. But if we look at everything that happened in the last years, we are getting there. And I can now safely say that we are no longer in 3D. We are most definitely in oh. 4D. And you see this everywhere in, in so many ways. Things just happening like this. We are manifesting whether we want it or not. And more of us are starting to realize that we are conscious or unconscious creators that we are creator beings and we are all co-creating and I think this is the beauty of it all learning to accept all truths because this is what unity is we all are different we are all unique everybody has their own truth and that's okay and many times the truth changes as everybody evolves yes. and again that is okay because nature changes yeah. And that's evolution and that is expansion. And that's also getting back. I mean, the more we learn, the more we learn that all is all and we are all. And I think that's the beauty of it all. I like that you use the word evolution because, you know, I think for a long time over these last couple of years, a lot of us would open our eyes in the mornings. And I know I had a lot of clients and even a lot of healers, they just wanted it to be over, right? They wanted it to be over. And it's just not going to work like that. It's more of an evolution. Um, and as long as you can see the benefits of that and the positive aspects of that, uh, you know, here's the thing, you know, a lot of thing too, People, some people are like, I just want life to go back to the way it was when it was 2019. And, and I think to myself, do you really, do you really? Because first of all, no, you wouldn't. If you even could take this person that you are in 2022 and put them back in 2019, and I'm not dismissing tragedies of, mm -hmm. of losing people and some of the real horrors that have happened here. But what I, I'm talking kind of universally, and what do I mean by that? We've expanded so much. We've expanded so much that if you were to take you and put you back into 2019, you'd be like, you'd be feeling squeezed. You'd be feeling weird. And you'd be like, what's the point, right? You, there's a lot that you wouldn't even realize maybe unless you, you could magically go back into time like that. So it's up to us to create the next thing. And, and evolution is a great word to use, I think. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't have said it better. All right. Tell me a little bit more about, um, in the time we've got left, uh, tell us a little bit more about some of your 
sessions, some of your quantum healing work, um, what have been some little stories or outcomes or what's some, some of the things that have surprised you? Um, well, I think favorites? the most, the most beautiful thing is seeing how people change after a session and how they have been struggling with so many things for so many years. And it just takes this tiny little session to set them back on. I don't think an organic timeline is really the way to put it, but I think maybe the fact that we are bringing all aspects of oneself within the physical body here is what uh, puts one or reminds one of their innate power. And as they experience all these infinite aspects that they are and that they can be, it reminds one of how magnificent and majestic one is. And it just kind of realigns and balances everything holistically, the physical body with the emotional body, with the mental body, with, with the energetic body, everything just comes back into place. And for instance, people who have suffered from insomnia for years suddenly can sleep or people who um, have had anxiety, certain kinds of anxiety and have been going to the psychiatrist for years to try and get rid of it these things just disappear with one session. And to me, this is the most beautiful thing. And also being able to travel with the clients and perceive what they perceive. I think this is also a gift that is just priceless. I, I really think, I don't know. I think this is the perfect world to be doing this and it's the perfect time and the perfect time and space to be here and to practice this kind of work and to, remind everyone of who they truly are. And again, this thing with playing different roles and the truth and being in your power. Something that I realized with all these evil beings and uh, I don't know, reptilians or souls that are evil and they're sticking to this client and they don't want to let go. <laughs> Eventually they are actually just lost souls who are playing a role or who have been told to stick to this client and make sure that they're going to live a lousy life, but they're just playing a role. And when they realize, or we help them realize that they actually are love and a fractal of source, that's when this light goes off and you end up having a session, not just for the client, but for that entity that is attached to them and I don't know for entire ancestral line I mean it's just absolutely mind-boggling and mind-blowing and it's so beautiful it's I guess the realization again that we are all a fractal of source and uh, but also we are individual and uh, unique and magnificent and I think there's nothing more beautiful than these sessions to bring it all together and so many people that want to channel right I was also taking I took Pamela Ireland's uh, wow. medium and channeling mm -hmm. course and then after having a session I uh, not just this was I took it after I did the session with um, Allison but I realized wait a minute I've always been channeling and I am channeling and I think this is the beauty of the sessions also that we can bring everything back together, integrate everything within the human vessel here. And to me, this is also what grounding means, not just grounding to earth, but grounding within the physical body, bringing all that you are here to consciously live life as your higher self and breathe and just take action as your higher self. And yeah, this is how people start channeling. This is how, you know, it's, it's, it's such a gift. It's such a, I don't know. It's surprise over surprises, over surprises, within surprises. It's just so beautiful. I'd love that you brought up this ancestral timeline. The very last session I did was with a woman who, um, wow, did we, you know, we just kind of followed the thread uh, backwards uh, through both, both mother and father ancestral lives but 
but primarily the mother one. And it really, uh, her, her whole life was focused on these female issues. And, um, you know, what we learned in that one is so amazing because, you know, of course, physically, uh, you are as, as an egg before it was uh, fertilized by your biological father, that egg already existed within your mother as a baby when she was in your grandmother, right? So this is a physical scientific fact this genetic material of you, at least in part, that, that egg part was in your grandmother, you know, it was in her energy field. It was in her womb. It was in, within your mother, within your grandmother and this sort of, you know, Russian doll kind of thing, but that energy affects that part of you that is physical. And you can actually in these sessions, you can make your way back there examine that and make some adjustments or some realizations or, you know, these, these timeline issues. It's like, well, uh, you know, we switch timelines, they say all the time. And then there's this, yeah. also this idea though, that timelines are, are collapsing and there's a lot of different ways that looks. I think some of the way that looks is with the, you know, mandala effect and you know, what you, you and I have already said, which is, you know, well, in, in, in our early days, it was one moon landing, just one, <laughs> because they figured out they weren't going to do it anymore. That's probably the biggest mandala effect for me ever was that one, because I just, uh, it blew my mind when all these people had all these other uh, versions of that ra reality. And that is the biggest one for me that was sort of like, well, you know, we are where we are now and we are where we are now because of decisions, our soul and our higher self together has, has, um, orchestrated, but not only with, uh, just this whole spiritual woo woo thing, but with this thing that is our physical body, this is like a, a partner in all of that. And it's some of, um, the game, if you will, and, and game is the wrong word. Um, it's some of why we're doing this is to bring that stuff here. <laughs> and it's yes. a huge challenge. It's a huge challenge and it hurts. It hurts. And, you know, um, again, we're, we're coming down to the, the end of our time, but, uh, or, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are, you know, quite frankly, they're weary. And as we, we move from one, uh, <sighs> challenge worldwide to this next one that we're smack dab in the middle of in right now what would you like to say to people out there to sort of help them hold on to the positivity and um, and keep going without kind of giving up mm, there are two things that helped me and one of them that I actually realized just before we started this conversation and one is always remain in the eye of the storm and remember that you are the storm so Meaning, concentrate. This is also something Metatron is one of my main guides, and he told me, You are the storm. There is, you make everything happen. And no matter how much the circumstances are crazy around you, you can find that peace within yourself and move with it. Try to always remind, uh, remain in the middle. And as it moves, move with it. That doesn't mean be absolutely ignorant of it, know what's happening, but don't engage emotionally in a way that it takes you down and it destroys you because that's just like adding salt to a wound. The wound is there. There's no need for extra suffering. It doesn't help anybody. And this is exactly what happened with me this morning that I started to get into the whole energy of the collective and I started crying and I couldn't stop crying. And I thought, I don't know how I'm going to get to do this <laughs> because I'm just crying all the time. And then I realized that, wait a minute, I need to be in, um, it, I was making it about me. Oh my God, how this is affecting me. Right. And it's not about how it's, I mean, the world is suffering out there, but somehow I make it about myself, how it's affecting. I am crying here, but I'm having, I'm having it good while the world, you know, so I think the idea is to 
become, instead of being selfish, become selfless. And when we become selfless, we can see things from a higher perspective. And when we see things for a higher perspective, it doesn't mean I'm above anything or anyone. It just means you see the whole, you understand the whole thing. And we kind of understand just like with this thing that we've been going through over the past years, right? It's, it had its downs and I've also lost family members to it and many have but we have it also had like you said a boomerang effect it had side effects right they wanted to destroy us but it had side effects because we actually learned to grow out of it and we learned to be different for some of us awakenings took place rememberings took place and that is because when you go back to the self and you center within your heart and just take a moment and take a breath, that's when things become easy. Because when you're in the moment, in the present moment, the worries of the future and the past, which is now an illusion and no longer matters, disappear. So when you are centered here, that's, that's where you can start creating and living your life and breathing from and try to be there every time it's okay to digress it's okay and also be kind to yourself because we tend to beat ourselves down and there's also this thing in the in the new age where they say you only have to be love and you only have to be you cannot be sad you cannot be depressed you cannot be angry hey, we're still human. And we came here to have a human experience. And this is part of the learning. It's part of the growing. Anger can bring empowerment. There's so many ways to grow. Yeah. And I think it's important to be kind with ourselves and to say, it's okay. Just take a yeah. step back and breathe and be within and Yep. Denying that you're human and denying that you have human reactions to things is the basis for some of the biggest physical problems people have. Because when you, when you go, nope, nope, I can only be love or whatever, then you actually take what's really in you that might be anger or disappointment and you stuff them into your physical body somewhere, which, uh, you know, we have found out over and over again is uh, the precursor, if uh, not the manifester of a disease in the body, yep. uh, pain and all that stuff. So, well, what a beautiful way to wrap it all up. Ara, this has been a lot of fun talking to you. Would you come back and talk to me again someday? I would love to. I love <laughs> it. Absolutely. It was so fun. I'm just, I don't even know why I was nervous. I oh it. yeah, no, yeah. Why, why in the why, why in the world? I'm just really sorry it's taken so long to uh, for us to get it all set up, but uh, we'll do more in the future. Okay, absolutely. All right. Well, Thank I know you, you can find Aura on the QuantumHealers.com website um, directory listing, but go ahead and share your own personal website with everyone if you would. Yeah, then there's the website, which is auraUniverse.com, universe as a Y-O-U. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That's beautiful. Well, thank you again so much. And thank you all for watching another episode of Quantum Realms 2022. And stay tuned for the next one, because there's more coming. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.